Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. The Ibadan explosion, of course, is the topical news now. Um, in terms of security around the country. Okay, uh, we'll be visiting, you know, Oyo State, and we'll be hooking up with uh, Mr. Fatai Owosheni, the former Commissioner of Police in Lagos, but now Special Advisor on Security to the Oyo State Government. Uh, that'll be in due course. But uh, in the meantime, we do have a package on that um, explosion in Oyo State. Chaos and panic gripped the entire neighborhood of Bodija and its surroundings in the late hours of Tuesday as an explosion said to have emanated from a private residence plunged the entire community into turmoil. <laughs> it's the day after the incident and rescue operations have not stopped, with state and federal agencies working to save trapped victims under the rubble. The tales and devastation are evident as residents and families are still in awe of the destruction, watching their homes reduced to rubbles and little or nothing left of their belongings. The house was is housing um, foreigners. They are, they are Gambians and Senegalese, and they, they engage in mining activities. So definitely they had explosives in the building. Among the people that are resident here, they are tenants. So they are the one that is illegal miner, and they are storing the explosive illegally. Shortly after Governor Sheimak in this visit to the scene, he held a briefing alongside his emergency medical team, assuring residents that perpetrators of such acts would not go unpunished. The further update we can provide at this time is that we have information regarding the company that was using that residence to store explosives. Rest assured that all that were involved directly and indirectly in bringing this tragedy upon us will be brought to book. The chief medical director of the University Teaching Hospital, Libadon, on his part, assured that medical attention for the victims has been intensified to avert additional fatalities. The health workers came, and of course, we also activated our trauma response system, and all our staff have been helping to ensure that these victims of the, uh, the victims of this explosion have the best of care. Undoubtedly, the devastating effect of the disaster have left unending memories in the heart of those who were affected. But the expectation is that the government put in place appropriate measures that will prevent such occurrence from happening again in future. Olaidio Yewole, TVC News, Ibadan. Okay then, so um, there you are, the latest, um, we, as I said, as soon as we link up with um, the uh, spokesperson, well, not so much the spokesperson as the special advisor on security uh, to the Oyo State Governor, we'll be getting, indeed, you know, a further uh, update on the situation. Um, as we speak now, he's being uh, prepared for live broadcast. So um, this is what has been going on and um, uh, the, uh, well, there's so many security issues. Um, we know that the president has um, indeed launched a special, well, he has caused the police to launch a special uh, intervention squad regarding the kidnappings that are going on in Abuja. And then they have this uh, explosion uh, along the in Ibadan. President Tinumbu has directed, uh, again, that um, relief to victims. Uh, be provided. Here we are opening um, the phone lines as we are preparing um, to be, you know, spoken with uh, by Fatai Owosheni. Okay. Um, well, these pictures are, 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 are of this morning, the, the last pictures you were hearing. And uh, Mr. George has called in from Ikeja on this particular uh, issue. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yeah, thank you very much for calling. What happened in, uh, what happened in, in Adon is, is so sad. And, uh, 
I mean, I would partake from this president. We know that he is trying his best, trying to fix the economy. So please, put the trust, trust is in his attention to security. The way the security is driving the country, we cannot continue like this. We find it difficult to fix the economy with the rate things are going with security. The kidnappers have become people that cannot be touched. But uh, President Buhari used money, a lot of money to support uh, to carry that. Where are they? If uh, the military people know where this forest, where these kidnappers are in the forest. And we have to carry that that can stay in the bottom and target somewhere in Lagos and get it. Why are we not using it? What is more terrorizing than what we are experiencing in Nigeria today? The president should please, please and please pay extra attention to security issues. If I were him, I will also give security keys to the If insecurity happens in your zone, it is a tactic to determine whether you remain in your post or not. Same thing goes for the police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the way it is going now, it's like it's dominating the whole economy. People can not even uh, uh, pass the, the road safely without being afraid of being kidnapped. And I'm going to people's homes, even in the federal capital territory, who have kidnapped them. I'm going to wait on the the knock at the gate of uh, Aso Villa. Indeed. I mean, thank you. Thank you very much. For, thank you very, very much for calling in, uh, Mr. George. Indeed, security distractions all over the place. And um, well, uh, now I can, you know, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Tony Ofoyeto properly. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, uh, DG, Director General International Institute of uh, Professional Security. And indeed, compliments of the new year to you. This is the very year. first time <laughs> that we are meeting. Happy new year yeah. Unfortunately, it is in these dire uh, kind of um, circumstances uh, that we find ourselves so early in the new year. Just there's no let up one after the other. Uh, Mr. George there was just commenting on the situation with the kidnappings in uh, Abuja and the consequent, um, you know, formations that have been, you know, thought about. Uh, and now we have this one. So it's like we, security is becoming an issue of distraction. All focus, all resources of the government are being forced in this direction. That's hardly usual. Uh, it's not unusual if you have to look at it from a political perspective, but I don't think that is what um, should really bother the average Nigerian now. Um, of course, we've had this avalanche of security challenges from the time of um, uh, Jonathan, when terrorism was introduced into Nigeria, and now it has become cancerous. <laughs> I remember that um, then we were shouting that terrorism is like cancer, if you allow it to grow, it may get to a stage you are talking of chemotherapy. And at that point in time, it becomes a... Uh, but having said so, I also want to say that um, uh, it's not also out of place to say initiative, like the one that um, is recently you know, um, brought up by the Inspector General of Police. Yeah, that is the Special, special Intervention, intervention Squad. squad. Uh, it's a good one. When I read it, I felt, look, uh, this is good uh, because precisely for for issues, security issues like this, what you need basically is just an intervention. But the challenge and the prayer would um, seek the indulgence of um, the Inspector General of Police to understand is that uh, intervention programs are always very expensive. In actual fact, they are extra budgetary expenses. Okay. So if he wants to make that intervention program a success, I expect that they should send a supplementary bill to the National Assembly. Yes, the is, National is, Assembly... Is that will, serious? Yes. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll come and learn a bit more about what exactly it, it means, because people just hear about, um, you know, uh, the launch of a special intervention program. We've seen pictures already of policemen speaking to other people. But uh, uh, Alaji uh, uh, Kazim in Ikorodu, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yes. Let me just, uh, I would like just to make a quick contribution. And happy new year in your ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy um, new year to you too. Mr. Yori, when exactly Nigeria we have to think outside the box? Everything that pertaining to money, 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 money issues, we are destroying our society. We are continuing like this. At least by now, the earth is supposed to be ruled. By now, in a developed country, if you keep on doing the same thing, the same way they are doing it, this sort of like this is going to continue, continue, and nothing will happen. If you look at our environment, even your office in K2, where I live in Ikudu, you will see that we miss the western area with industrial area and commercial area now. And nobody talk until they have problems. They will start to cry, bored, resource. And still, it's not done like this in developed countries. You want to change, you have to keep the ground running now. If you keep on talking, talking on TBC, on channel, talking, and not to change. We have to be honest to ourselves. It has to be stored. The body is at one of the best areas in the battle at the east. Now, because of this guy is a resident, he's not the owner of the house. Look at, look at the gate. So, where the resident is already escaped on the run, and nothing will happen. So, good job, Mr. Harry. We have to let, at least we have to let the government understand. We can't continue like this. Okay. We okay. just want to be a better sector in Nigeria. Oh, all right. It's just money, money, money. As soon as we are making money, we don't even care about life. We don't value life anymore in this society. Mm. We that oh. we live in abroad for a long time. I, I'm a Swedish citizen. I'm in Nigeria. But any time in this country, you are in the, the same city every time, every time. It's so sad, Mr. Oh. We have to call our government to start. Government wants to at least to do the right thing. Please. I'm begging Nigeria, begging whoever that you know, if they have good art. It's like ninety five percent of this country now don't care about this life. They just want to make money to build a successful life. And what's going to happen after 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 some years? You will left everything behind you. And it's it's done. The damage are done now. Alaji Kazim, mm -hmm. thank you very much for calling. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your calling in. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think Alaji Kazim is bemoaning. Uh, you know, as you heard him, money, money, money. I think what he's saying in there is that there's a lack of a. A systemization you know people are supposed to know what 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 happens in a given area uh, we don't have that kind of a thing is as long as money I think that was what I got from what he was saying yeah the, the, I understand. you know in the, uh, areas that are really residential they should be strictly, they, residential. They should be strictly yeah. residential you find shops you hand businesses you so all of this as he said I think he said he's a dual citizen and he noticed that this doesn't go on where he's coming from and uh, well well, there's no egalitarian or utopian society anywhere in the world. Um, all societies have their own strengths and weaknesses. So at times we may not do that absolute juxtaposition mm -hmm. uh, so that we don't begin to think that there's a perfect society in the world. But I also understand the, um, that there are basic things that um, should be you know, universal. And Nigeria should really adopt such basic things. But I was talking about the a special intervention squad of um, the IGP, and I felt it's a good initiative, but it's an initiative that personally I would want to um, look at it from the perspective of you want it to work, then you empower it. Now, what are the, what are the instructions and the mandate that have been given to this special intervention fund? I, I know that uh, the IGP talked about um, intelligence, which is actually key and central. But I will want him to charge that squad to understand that they should not be reactionary. If they are reactionary, it will go back to square one. I expect that by now, they should be deliberate about fishing out the kidnappers, going to look for them, not waiting for them to strike. Yeah, I suppose that is... Going to look I, for I them it. now. Indeed. And those that are their sponsors, those that are warehousing them or warehousing their equipment... Those that are their accomplices in telecommunication and banking industry. It should be a holistic intervention approach. And to achieve that, because if this is not part of the police budget up initial, and you are bringing this in now, and you want to fund it, then and you have already have headings for all the items you want to attend to in 2024. For goodness sake, and you want it to achieve the desired result, you will need that funding. Mm. You will need it. Well, so indeed. It, as you say, um, 
You know, I, I, no, the our other guest that I said was being prepared, Mr. Fatai Ojini, former Commissioner of Police in uh, Lagos, and now uh, Special Advisor to the Governor of Security here in uh, Oyo State, uh, he's about to speak with us now. And I was just looking at the news and some of the things that he had said in a different context before, uh, how he thought that there was a failure uh, of uh, intelligence. intelligence. You know, uh, the, you, you must have seen this. There was a failure of intelligence if we are getting the kind of situations that we are getting. I think it was really regarding, relating to um, the situation over in, uh, in, the, in Abuja. Yeah. Uh, so he's ready for us now. Uh, Mr. Fatai Oweshini, good morning to you, sir. And thank you very much for, uh, you know, Sarkis, taking time. Uh, uh, Oga, good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. I was just talking about your comment earlier uh, in the news about a failure of uh, intelligence being part of our problems. Uh, might this also apply to the situation in Ibadan, this Ibadan explosion, where until we had this catastrophe, quite frankly, is the word. Uh, what can you tell us in that regard? Because people are supposed to be watching out, not reacting to things that have happened. Thank you, sir. Uh, we've been talking of uh, failure of, of intelligence. I won't talk about it loosely, as everybody is talking about it. Um, you can't have intelligence if people um, are not uh, conscious of their environment. The philosophy upon which policing and security is based is the police uh, are the people, the people are the police. And in Yoruba language, when they say, it's your banile, it's your baloko, in your longebe, humans, human intelligence, that is what we need to build. If we are whole lackadaisical um, to our surroundings, we are not conscious of our surroundings, and we want to leave it to the security agents alone. If you don't give them information, they are not babalaos, they are not uh, talisman that we know everything. So people must talk to them. But if we have a, a conspiracy silence to say security agents and government alone should do it, it will not work. All of us must get involved and the security agencies should also integrate the people into the security architecture. Globally, you cannot solve security challenges without getting the people involved. We've mouthed community policing, but how integrated are we to the um, non-state actors and everyone? And this is where intelligence will be meaningful. Some people have talked about technology. We shouldn't put all our attention on technology. The human elements um, are very, very important. The situation we have in Ibadan, people had said, oh, uh, government failure, um, security failure. What have the people done? There is the resident and landlord association. Um, if they know what is happening, uh, um, have they discussed it within the association? They've said, oh, um, at a point in time, the security people um, probably interviewed or interrogated that fellow. Um, this is an area that you have emeritus professors, elite, a former deputy governor of or your state. They are powerful enough to ensure that people that houses are rented to, um, you know, they take and uh, they watch them, what they do and everything. So putting all their forces together, no person, no security officer, we want to discountenance um, what uh, is happening there. It's just about um, us taking um, consciousness about our environment um, into consideration. And this is how um, we can be solving problems like this. And of course, the agencies that are saddled with responsibility, um, they must live up to their responsibility. It is high time we re-examine the capacity of these agencies. Under the explosive ordinance law, when you buy explosives, you apply to the Federal Ministry of Mines and Power, it will pass through the Office of the National Security Advisor. 
um, the explosive ordinance uh, department. They're supposed to escort the explosives to the address that is indicated in your application. How much of that we do now? It is the overall decadence in this country. And of course, we must keep data. The, the truth is that don't let us fool ourselves. We don't have data. Nigerians don't have addresses. We've said this before. That is where you have to start from. You don't put something on nothing. We must put the foundation to be strong. To an extent, um, from the activities of Amateko in your state, it has worked. Even the other intelligence agencies, DSS, the military intelligence, it worked to an extent. But for it to work perfectly all right, we must integrate our people, the grassroots. They must be free to talk to security agencies. I've been asked a question to say that, oh, people don't know where to go. People are afraid to talk to um, security agents. I, it is high time we, we stop giving such excuses. When people want to use the police or security agent for bad things, to illegally escort them, to come and guard their parties, to follow them uh, and carry back, they know where to go. We, we, we've been in service before we are retired now. We are amongst the people. They know when to call us to say, oh God, I passed one way and uh, people have arrested me. But when it comes to rendering civic obligation to the community, we will keep on saying that, oh, we don't even know who to approach. Meanwhile, there are various means through which intelligence can be spread. Put something in the social media. It will go viral. Whether you like it or not, the people in government will see it. Members of the National Assembly will see it. They will rate it in, um, at the floor of the Assembly. So we must um, stop hiding under the cloak of all, and we don't trust security people. The world has gone beyond that. Nigerians have gone beyond that. Even people that did not attend um, school, the formal school, they know how they communicate things that concern them alone. But when it comes to the community, we check in our responsibility. Okay, then. Okay, please stay with us. I will just take a quick break. We'll be right back and we'll continue uh, with... Uh... Our guest, uh, Special Advisor on Security to the Ohio State Governor. In studio, we also have uh, Dr. Tony Okoye. Now, stay with us, please. Uh, we'll be right back. Our planet, our home, threatened by man's activities with fears of mass extinction on the rise. On Green Angle, we examine the issues that affect our environment, seek solutions to put us on track to secure and restore a cleaner and greener world for generations to come. Welcome back. And um, we're, we're looking, actually, it was supposed to be a dual topic, but um, because we, the resources we have, you know, seem to be leaning in more in favor of the uh, oil state explosion, we're staying there and we're delighted to have with us the um, special advisor on security to the oil state government, uh, Mr. Fatai Uwoshemi, at the other end in uh, oil state. Uh, but in studio, we also have uh, Dr. Tony Ofoyeta, Director General, International Institute of Professional uh, Security. And um, Dr. Foyeta, just before we went there, you uh, heard the special advisor uh, speak about the, the responsibility of the public, of the citizenry, uh, to also uh, bear this. Now, 
uh, of course, we're, we're still in contact with him. But I wanted to ask you, um, there's a Nigerian attitude about how, whether, how safe it is to actually be relating with um, police, security people. In other words, how trustworthy are they uh, in, in terms of what you're trying to do? They, uh, you always hear, see something, say something. Um, is that really the safest thing to do? And for those who have that kind of an attitude, uh, do you see anything to their concern at all? Well, um, yes, it's a good idea to talk about. You see something, you say something. And uh, I also agree with him to the extent that um, the citizenry, we have that responsibility to divulge and give information to appropriate authority. But antecedents, and President has asked this question, um, trust and credibility is built over time. It's not something that, you know, we get just out of campaign and all those stuff like that. If over time, for example, the Ibadan case. Now, the question is, are you telling me the authorities are not aware of it, either formally or informally? People would have complained. To what extent did you do anything before then? Now, let us even assume that people didn't complain. What are... The people, what is the assurance that if they had complained, mm -hmm. that there will be swift action? Yeah. Now you discover that I said something in this country. The culture of violence is also built by government over time. I need this. I need something from you as government. Our road is bad. Our this is bad. Our that is bad. I keep writing petition. Nobody is answering until one day. I and my group will go to your office and vandalize. It becomes headline news. Mm. Once the media picks it, the government becomes interesting. We have built a culture of violence. Now, credibility. We have seen over the years where people will make reports, and the next thing is either the people, the person is dead or something happened, and people now begin to relate I... such bad information. Yes. It may not be absolute. Mm -hmm. It's not absolute. Mm -hmm. But what I think is that the first thing is security agency will need to rebuild a culture of trust. Trust with, with trust. the very citizenry. Yes, okay. let the people trust them in such a manner that they protect their informant. Whole, whole so whether the information is right or the information is wrong, first build that culture of protecting those that give you the information. Okay, let me, people who have the confidence to give you more. Uh, let, let me thank you, um, uh, Wale in Houston, Texas. You've been holding on for quite a while. Good morning to you. Go right ahead now. Good morning, Uncle Yemi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Thank you for calling in. One concerning the insecurity, I think the uh, Nigerian government needs to go heavily on all these telecommunication companies in Nigeria. They can't just come into Nigeria just to make money, and that's all. Because the reason why I'm saying this is because all every phone call you make is attached to a tower. You get me? Every, every phone call you make is attached to a tower. Let's just let's take this, for example. If you leave motion and move to Jeleba, they see your, your net, your steel. You, you can be tracked. Number, we are starting numbers. All the numbers that call, that make calls during that hour can easily be traced. Within this time, this, this time from 1 o'clock, this number is under this tower. And he moved from this time to this time under this tower. So the, the nurses, and I'm sure they, are, they cannot just be using their platform to, to be allowing their platform to be penetrating criminals, to be penetrating crimes in Nigeria without their coming in to do something. Even if federal government are trying, I know federal government are trying to do all their best to put this thing to an end, and all the delegation comes in, they need to come in and do their part as well. All right, so, then. My second point Okay, quick, the quick, is, quick, quickly then, since it's... Um, you, 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 in yes. all sense, we shouldn't blame government in, all, in every, everything that happens in Nigeria. Because there is, there is a policy, there is procedure and policy that every company has to take. They might bring all these explosion stuff and go through the, all the paperwork, permit everything, tell the government, we're taking this into the side. Right? And the government knows they escort them to the side. But the government will not know when they're taking it out and bringing it to their residence. Because it's just like every, every, every other people drive their car, you go to work, you come back, they don't know what you, what you have in your car. 
So it's not every time we blame government. You have to blame the company because there's always a permit. Before you go into the store to take an explosion, you have to go through all the paperwork, do a permit, send to all the, all the government agencies before you can actually bring one out. So it's not just... Okay, I, I hear you. Indeed, thank you very much, and also thank you for the effort. Calling from the U.S. as it is, uh, there's something of a five or six hour difference depending on where uh, time differential, where, where you're calling from. Uh, so we appreciate uh, the inconvenience of your waiting up just because you wanted to join us uh, this morning. It's just gone uh, half past 11 in Nigeria. Uh, that sets you back around, I don't know, something around midnight. Or, or the, the, something like that, you know, or maybe 6 a.m. Maybe 6 a.m. But thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Wally, calling in from uh, Houston there. Uh, now, back to Mr. Woshini. Um, we, 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 we've been hearing uh, from people. Now, this whole, the question that you were talking about, see something, say something, um, I, I don't know if you agree that people have, might feel that they've, be, they've been at the wrong end of the stick for having this patriotic posture, uh, meaning that depending on how sensitive the information is, it might not be the safest thing to your general well-being. And you heard Tony speak there uh, on this whole matter that, look, in spite of being encouraged by what you say, there still is the antecedent to work by. Um, do you think uh, the, 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 the authorities, the police especially, need to do anything further to further encourage people that, look, you know, this is a renewed hope, renewed hope in all aspects of our life, even in security. Explosion was massive. It was a massive explosion. The Gazan. Yeah. Well, speaking, it, okay. We were, uh, clearly there's some issue there. You could see that the um, special advisor was speaking, but um, we couldn't hear him. So while we're trying to sort that out, uh, we, we, we're back to studio. So, um, uh, well, you know, Tony, you, you, the guy, the gentleman who called him from Houston was also sort of trying to explain that, look, it's not everything you can blame on police, but beyond all of this, people just need to be, people want to be safe. Uh, all this one that we're discussing, intellectual, you were just commenting when you're just looking at the pictures that, what? This is a humongous uh, BC, as our people say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. Uh, you know, I, but I understand. <laughs> you yes. know, this is, and all of this, I don't know, my, maybe it would have happened anywhere, but look, look how quickly information was really, uh, came to the public that, is it a Malian? Malian. That, they said it's a Malian b b miner of some sort. So people knew already. All, I think I saw something on social media, just as Mr. Woshini was saying. Put it on the social media, everybody's going to be aware of it. Uh, a gentleman, I forget his name now, said that he simply queried the, um, 
with the information that he had, he queried the um, corporate affairs uh, commission or something like that, and was able to determine that this person that he's interested in, along with four other people, one of which was a Nigerian, you know, have set up a company. So uh, that little bit of rudimentary intelligence was known. Now, if it was known, if, if it, if, thank you, sir, a background check. Um, I think this goes back to how serious we are really being with our intelligence and even with how to keep ourselves safe. This is a security, almost like a fiasco, like a security fiasco that we're in the middle of now. Mm, well, uh, this is not basically a security challenge as it is, um, except for the fact that um, maybe uh, negligence um, from the part of those that store such explosives in such places and maybe the regulatory authority following through with um, regulations and the like. Now, this that happened in um, uh, Ibadan should also tell you what will happen in Kaduna, should tell you what will happen in Zamfara, and what will happen even in the same Oyo state. Yeah, exactly. Same Are we sure that we have actually Oyo seen time. all yes. of the vulnerabilities? The, the, the whole thing is this. I expect that the Ministry of Mines and Power will be, or Mines, will be able to identify where we have mining activities. We have a lot of queries that use all these dynamites and the like. Now, do you even have record of all of them? The well, official and the unofficial. I would like to Especially so. those places where you talk about mining that goes very deep. Gold. How many people are dying in gold mining sites in Zamfara that are not being reported? In Kaduna State that are not being reported? Now the government has to be decisive. Why we don't talk much about the oil is because it's highly regulated. And because it's highly regulated, they are, even the multinational oil companies have been able to put in place security safety measures that they are now very very safety conscious when it comes to issues like uh, you know avoiding oil whatever in the oil sector but in mining of gold in mining of all the mineral resources and the like now that is also where you now have the attachment of the security challenges look at what is happening in plateau state you keep asking the question why plateau state but we are shying away from the fact that plateau state is a very rich con a state in all some of these re mineral resources. Platinum is a major depo We have a major deposit of it Platinum. in Plateau State. Yes, in Plateau State. Now look at all these villages that are being attacked. They are not being attacked just only because of land. What is inside the land? Now those places that have been attacked and villages have been sacked, what are you doing to ensure that those bandits don't take over those villages permanently? Okay. Now these are things, they are, they are interwoven. They indeed are. But let me, let me go back to Mr. Owosheni because um, Mr. Owosheni, uh, glad to have you back. We had challenges initially, and so when you were responding, uh, you know, your mic was mute. Um, you, you were going to speak on the issue. In fact, you, you were already speaking on the issue, but we couldn't hear it, about this whole question of trust and the trust, building trust. Um, what can be done to build the trust where people are afraid that the security agencies that you're supposed to report to, in other words, help, might betray you um, in a way that could, you know, really mess with your, secure, your, your personal security. In other words, the security so forces are, that you're supposed to be cooperating with are thrown in with the bad guys. What I was saying is that this thing is mutual. Um, when you talk of trust, and you talk of, um, you know, protection of informant. It is mutual. Right from when you even get the information, someone is there that you probably give to type things for you. Um, how trustworthy is that person? We've seen situations where informants bring information. And before you act upon it, they are in one bear parlor. They've divulged all what has been given to you. So this credibility problem is not one-sided. It is mutual. But I'm also emphasizing the fact that we cannot continue to give excuses. Nations don't grow when excuses are given. We must break that yoke. And of course, 
technology has come that will not even make you to have um, you know, a face-to-face -face, um, interaction with the person you want to give information. Put it on the social media. Let things go viral. The people that have been doing protests, they didn't uh, do anything other than to sensitize people. It goes viral. And the government, the responsible government, will look at what has gone viral. At the floor of the different state house of assemblies, they will discuss it. That will spur the security um, agencies into action. But if we continue to absorb uh, our people, the, the, the member, the citizens of uh, all this, and keep on saying it's because of mistrust. We will not get anywhere. Why do okay. we have representatives at the State House of Assembly and the National Assembly? You can give the information to them. And what I'm also saying is that when our people want to use security agents for bad things, they know the route they take. They will call us. I want to see the Commissioner of Police to come and help me recover one land or whatever. But when it comes to using information that will benefit to the community, they will say that mm -hmm. they are afraid. Don't mm -hmm. let us deceive ourselves. This is the okay. time to tell ourselves the truth. We are not saying the truth to ourselves. We must be able to speak the truth to ourselves and speak the truth to the authority. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Wojeni, as a result of this, um, uh, can one sort of assume that if, governor, if government wasn't really aware as to uh, the potential for danger that was lying in our midst there, uh, with uh, this haven't happened, are people, is, government, is there a way in which government can now comb the entire place, see other areas of vulnerability, check up on those things, since this caught us all by surprise, you shouldn't be having explosives in a residential area. Everybody knows that. So it was a vulnerability, it was a weakness, and it has happened. Are there ways for government to now be able to sweep and make sure that once bitten, twice shy kind of a thing? Um, the thing, like I've mentioned before, the use, purchase of dynamite explosives are governed under what we call explosive ordinance law. Um, there must have been some areas that they amended. The agencies that are supposed to administer this, including the ministry officials, some of them have not even seen that law before. In our early days in the police, that is what we call the miscellaneous heart. But I wonder if some of the um, people we have now, because of dwindling capacity um, that we have all over, not all security agencies, and in that explosive ordinance act, I had mentioned, you would um, register properly, you will send your application to the Federal Ministry of Mines and Power, the Office of the National Security Advisor will know. When approval is given to you, there are conditions precedent. One of the conditions precedent is that you must have a magazine that is suitable for storing that explosives. The ministry officials and uh, security officials were supposed to go to that magazine to find out that the place is suitable. They must also um, ascertain that the address with which you raise your application is where those things are. But because of a whole lot of bad things happening in this country now, you will see they will use the address in a plateau state. And when they are taking the explosives out, maybe one of the bosses in Abuja had said, oh, don't challenge Alaji. So many big men in this country. It will divert the security agencies, um, the security agents to another place. They will not be able to talk because they've been cowed, they've been intimidated. That this allergy, you know, is a friend to so 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 person. So if you argue with him, the guy has been intimidated, and you will see them now divert the explosives instead of taking it to the magazine where they're supposed to use it. They take it to um, another place. And this is what you have in this country. And that is why I say collective effort. We've seen situation even with the police, the mobile police. Someone will apply to say that, oh, I have a big company. And uh, Inspector General of Police, um, please give me security to cover my expatriates who are in Kano. They will take police mobile or SPU to say they want to protect their expatriates in Kano. But meanwhile, they use those mobile police to, 
you know, do their lifestyle by escorting them to social parties and everything. So these are things that we must check that we as a people too, we are dishonest. When we put application, we don't follow it rightly. The agencies are weakened. The ministry officials are supposed to go and ascertain where the thing to go to, whether you build it properly. They don't do that again. Just like when you want to open a, a bank account or people are released on bail. That is why bail is very difficult in Nigeria. Bailiffs are supposed to follow them to the addresses they are going to. Bank officials are supposed to go and do know your customers and whatever. They will not go. And when they go as well, we don't have addresses in this country. You may not like it. People may not like to hear it. If you say number 10, Nani Fowoshe, by the time you go back there tomorrow, it's going to be number 20, Ola Teju. So when you, and that is why 41A also take advantage of all these things. So we must have a database. We must lay the foundation. You cannot put something on nothing. And that is one of the critical problems that is uh, making our security challenges to look as if we are overwhelmed and we cannot do anything. We can do something. Nigeria has the capacity. We have the human resources. It's just about, you know, um, doing the right thing, um, doing institutional memory, learning from lessons, which we don't do. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Wushin, I appreciate everything that you've uh, commented on and explained, um, but I also need to know if you are saying that this kind of an accident that happened, in, for all of the reasons that you have suggested, um, it can't happen again. Uh, because people have been awake, uh, awoken by this, and certain measures are now in place, certain checks, rigorous checks are underway. Or is it that, look, what happened now, because of the parameters of what you've been speaking about, God forbid, could happen again somewhere else in Oyo State tomorrow? Within the past 48 hours, people have related with us. People that have been hiding information, they have interfaced with us. And I must say this, um, because of this illegal mining and some of the things that have been happening, if you follow Governor Shei Makinde, the executive governor of your state, he's been one of the leading governors that is fighting over the evolution of power. The state has been aware that we have problem with illegal miners. The whole Oyo Park that spread from or your state, up to Niger State, maybe part of Benin Republic. The state has been working assiduously. The governor has been supporting security to have clearance operation. And for us not to be having this, the governor signed an executive order late um, last year because he has engaged the federal government. When it was discovered um, that we have um, um, a milestone or gemstone uh, market, illegal market around Ojo and Mania. The governor engaged the federal government to say all these things that are in the exclusive le legislative list. Devolve some obligation to the state because part of what is in the exclusive ordinance act is to pay a regular visit to people that are selling and though your state has quite a number of them that you can go and check their record. Who have you sold to? Where are the addresses where these people say they are carrying these things to? And we we'll also go and check the addresses. The federal government alone, how many staff do they have in the Federal Ministry of Mines and Power? And that is what the governor of Oyo State has been preaching. Devolve some of these obligations to the state. And that, he has been frontal about that. And that is why the governor of Oyo State signed an executive order to say that even the federal government has an exclusive legislative power of this. The state, where the minerals are, that will feel the impact of any negative thing as a state that we have a right to have a law to protect our environment and to protect the people. So moving forward, um, his Excellency have put the security apparatus together to be frontal about this, to say, look, all intelligence reports you can put together, the DSS, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the Police Intelligence Unit, including our Motekun that are within the community, um, let us spread our tentacles. Within the past 48 hours, the information we had gotten, let us go, uh, let us start checking on them 
and of course engage members of the community, the traditional rulers. You've seen what has happened. So don't okay. let us hide under collecting cheap money and allow mm -hmm. these illegal miners to continue to do their illegal activities. And that is why your state has been doing, including doing clearance operations within the areas where they are having all these illegal mining activities and we keep on sustaining it using the military elements, the Amoteku and other security agencies. We have started that since last year. This is just right, one Mr. unfortunate Mr. incident. Oh, okay, okay. Indeed, uh, one keeps one's fingers crossed. You know, I think uh, we can actually read between the lines of um, you know, that response. There are aspects of it that are not entirely within the province of uh, the state government, but um, the governor is also a champion of we have to become more involved because of our own personal security. So I want to thank you very much, Mr. Fatah Yowoshini, Special Advisor on Security to the thank United States so Government. Thank you so much for having me. Indeed, our pleasure. Uh, Tony, also, I want to thank you very much. We've completely run out of time, but um, uh, I just hope, as the uh, Commissioner, um, you know, as the Special Advisor said, that um, actions have happened as a result of this that uh, will, will make this less of a possibility uh, going forward. Uh, so thank you very much also, Tony, for coming on the program as always. Thank you for having me. Indeed, we really appreciate you. So that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Uh, good night. Bye-bye uh, for now. <laughs>